Welcome back to uh, Juno Communications, the inside scoop where you can find us interviewing new and up and coming projects built on the Juno network. I'm thrilled to announce that today we have Joseph from Swift. How are you doing, Joseph? I am doing great, thank you. How about you, man? Yeah, I've, I've been back and forth, in and out different jobs, but we're back in business. Me and Lucas back on the inside scoop. Glad to have you on board. We have had you on before, but we've been cutting some cool snippets. But yeah, I believe you've been steamrolling ahead with developments of late. Um, we're excited to see some of these uh, demonstrations a, a little bit later. Um, before we dive into Swift, um, would you mind explaining what you do on the project and, and how you kind of ended up involved? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I told this little story last time when I came on to, to Juno Comms. Basically, just me and my co-founder, right, uh, Costa, which I think, by the way, you guys should meet at some point. So he approached me in college about the idea of uh, you know, decentralized e-commerce, that, that type of stuff. So here we are. We're working on it. Hopefully soon, we're going to have some more people working on it. We're you know, in negotiations with uh, Juno Growth. If anything, I do want to commend the people at Juno Growth because they're probably some of the most hardworking people right now that are interested in investing in crypto and again avi the whole team amazing to work with uh and as we kind of enter our last phase of negotiations we're looking forward to, to working with them great man um so what is the mission of swift uh, what are you guys trying to achieve with it we know it's an e-commerce site but how do you see it involved in crypto do you see the differentiation between uh, centralized e-commerce as opposed to blockchain e-commerce. Yeah, uh, to be honest, the overarching vision is that there's not really going to be a difference between centralized e-commerce and decentralized e-commerce. We don't brand ourselves as a crypto project, as a uh, decentralized solution. We brand ourselves as a faster, a cheaper, a simpler solution for merchants to set up stores, uh, receive more money for what they sell with lower fees and better analytics tools. So. I'd be happy to run you through kind of what the experience is of uh, creating a store, uh, adding products to that store, and uh, yeah, managing your orders, viewing the orders you've received, as well as some of our latest developments, right? Encryption tools and the likes. Sounds great. If, look, if you've got any other quick questions, we can just dive straight into our presentation. No, man, no, nothing. Like, really, let's head into the presentation. And let's have a look at what you so, have to show and what you guys came up with. For sure. All right. Again, I'm splitting this presentation into three steps. We're going to look into creating a store. We're going to look into uh, users making orders on your store. And finally, we are going to go over uh, our encryption services and how we're pivoting our business model towards providing access to sensitive information to clients all over blockchain. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys. Excellent. So early on this call, we set up a Juno merchandise DAO. Uh, and this DAO right here is going to be managing a Swift protocol store. So as of right now, we don't have a UI for sellers to create stores. But what we do have is a CLI tool and smart contracts deployed on the Juno blockchain. So our CLI tool called Swift CLI, uh, developers can use this to quickly bootstrap stores. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> but because we're running through a DAO, we're just going to go ahead and set things up through proposals. And by the way, as a side note, you will probably want to cut through, cut out a lot of this stuff because I'm just going to be like setting up proposals. No bother. So me. maybe, maybe as, as you go you through that, to... maybe you can uh, answer a couple of questions while you do that. I think like jump cut through <laughs> it, you know, because it's I'm going to explain what's happening. But at the same time, you don't want like 10 minutes of uninterrupted like yeah, JSON. Yeah. Right. Uh, so basically, all you have to do to create a store is instantiate a contract and then execute that contract. So I'm just going to set that up and actually have this written up in like a... Uh, hold on, let me find this. Here we go. Um, so this is how you instantiate it. You just need to find the commerce code. Okay, that's actually in the CLI. <laughs> all good. It's 12.01. Okay, let's do this. Um, so instantiate commerce contract. 
Are you planning to build a front end so that people can do this without oh, yeah. any coding knowledge? Yeah, that's once we secure this funding from Juno Growth. <laughs> yeah. So for now, it's it's just backend tooling mostly. I think that was one of the so let's also uh, things that made like Shopify and stuff so successful, right? That it was just anyone could yeah. could use it, even if they had no fucking clue how to use HTML, CSS, and all those languages. Exactly, mm -hmm. and we're we're working with Design DAO. We're going to have some templates. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 coming along. We just yeah securing funding because I can't do it all on my own. Yeah, <laughs> I know the pain. It's like <laughs> your day is only twenty four hours as well, right? And you just can't sure, do man. building, marketing, everything on your own. It just doesn't work. Yeah, I'm just gonna set a withdrawal address, and then we just need to set our token. So this is kind of the best part because we can use any token, right? So this could be IBC. This could be. Uh, this could be ETH, this could be Bitcoin, this could be whatever you want. Um, so I'll, I just have to provide it with the denomination, which is going to be the contract address of our DAODAO token. And then uh, the token type. So that's, in this case, CW20. There we go. So all the tokens will be withdrawn to the DAO. And then the admin of this contract is, of course, going to be the DAO. Although, you do want to add a secondary admin here, a human to actually ship the packages. Yeah. Uh, because they need to be able to access other humans' data so that they can create a shipping label and ship it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and end my address in here so that I can do that. Uh, and that's basically it. This is all the parameters you need for a store. Okay. And the admin is, of course, going to be the contract. And then we do need to execute the contract that gets created here. I don't think we can do that on Dada, which is really unfortunate. Because I would have liked to be able to just immediately do that. So this is probably the first thing that any DAO is going to want to do with our current lack of UI is instantiate a Swift commerce contract. Uh, I'm going to set up some, docu some documentation for this very soon so that people can you know, know exactly what to do here. But because our contracts are exper experimental for now, I wouldn't recommend that anyone set up a Swift commerce contract as it may lead to loss of funds. Yes. So let's just go ahead and, uh, yeah, I gotta cover my legal tracks here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no um, financial advice. Just go ahead and push this through. So just back no up a little financial. bit for, um, for any viewers who might not know what instantiate a contract means, what is it you're actually doing there, Joseph, by instantiating the SWIFT contract? Exactly. So what's happening here is we are creating a new smart contract on the chain that lives in its own little address and stores its own data. This contract is going to be able to handle your orders, uh, handle your shipping, all of that stuff. So the only human input that's going to be required here is for you to print out a shipping label, put it on a box, and then bring it to UPS or whatever shipping provider you use. The last thing is people might want to have products on their site. So let's just go ahead and create a proposal for that. Add Juno shirt to store. So uh, set store parameters. Like all the stuff with the proposals that you're doing right now is just because we've decided that the DAO is in control of the web shop, right? If I was um, a, an e-commerce store and be like, no, I don't have a DAO. It's just me doing my drop shipping. I can do this without DAO, DAO, right? Exactly. And even further down the road, uh, we're going to have a DAO, DAO integration through Abstract, uh, which means that you won't actually need to go to DAODAO here. You can give DAODAO permissions on Abstract and then Abstract will handle creating the smart contract for you and everything. Okay. So let's go ahead and execute the smart contract to set some parameters for our store. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set our marketing. So let's just do that. Um, so the message is update marketing. Just go ahead and add some data to our store. So, uh, and then socials, I'm gonna leave that empty for now, guys, just as, because we're, we're creating a tiny little contract, it doesn't really matter what, what socials we have here. And I'll just set a name. So the name is going to be um, Juno Merch Dial. And then the logo is gonna be the IPFS link that I 
Should have copied a while ago. There we go. <laughs> There's the logo. I'm just gonna make sure that that link actually leads somewhere. Yeah, it does. Awesome. Uh, that's it. So that's all of our marketing data done. Okay, and now we'll, we're gonna wanna add a product. So let's just go ahead and create a listing. So the way we do that is by going create listing and then we need to provide it with some data. So first things first, if that listing is active, so this can be changed in case you wanna remove some items from your store while you maybe uh, get more stock or whatever of the sort. And then we'll set our price. So this will be a certain amount multiplied by a million of the token that we set as the currency of our store. So let's do 10 tokens. So that should be 10 million, this number. Just make sure that's 10 million. Uh, then, one thing that we do want to set is our options. So this would be, for example, for shirts, we'd have XL, L, small, whatever. Uh, in this case, we're not going to set any options, but if someone was running a merch store, they would probably want to set options that are either set by whoever's printing their merch or whoever's providing the, the textiles. So if you're working with one of our partners, like Space Merch DAO, then they may provide you with those options that you will need to enter into your store. And now let's just set the attributes. Um, so for the attributes, the first thing is definitely the name. Uh, in this case, we'll just call it uh, Juno Shirt. How about that? Uh, let's just go ahead and give it a description. Best Juno Shirt out there. And last things uh, that we need to add are images. And you can add as many of these as you want. But in this case, we're just going to add one. That's going to be the image that I uploaded to IMGBB, but of course I closed that tab, which means that I need to upload it again. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just grab this right here. Boom. All right, we got it. Uh, that's the image. And that's pretty much it. That's all the data you need. Price, image, name, and if it's active. And of course, if you have options, you might want to provide those too. Awesome. Boom. You know what? This part you can leave in to yeah. all developers out there. I hate you in 128. You understand me? This makes no sense. Why does a number have to be a string? Come on. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> All right. Um, I'll approve this. I'm sure there's a very like exact reason as to why it has to be a string, but I don't care. It still doesn't make sense. Make it a number. <laughs> so um, let's check out. Obviously, we don't have a store UI now, but this is eventually where things would lead. You'd have a store, people would add things to their cart. Mm -hmm. Once we launch, obviously we're gonna have um, templates that people are gonna be able to use, quickly set up a store without having to code. For now, all we have is the checkout page. Uh, yeah. But let's go ahead and check out. I'm gonna buy Juno shirt here for 10 merch tokens. Yeah. So I've now got the checkout page open for the store. And I'm gonna show you guys just how easy it is to check out using your wallet on Swift protocol. So. I'm just going to go ahead and enter my name here. I'm just Joe Schmo. Nothing to see here. Uh, I will enter my real email, though, because I do want to show you um, how our email notifications work. And my phone number is 123456-7890. My address is 123 Sesame Street. Um, and I live in New York, in the state of uh, New York. Uh, and my postal code... Uh, again, I am not American, so I guess it's like, I think it's five digits. I can't remember. All right, but yeah, let's go ahead and pay with Kepler. So the first thing that needs to happen is we need to authorize our proprietary encryption protocol to access uh, our user data here. So let's just authorize that and then get an error because my API is on the wrong node version. Just honestly, what you can do here, just cut at the part where I authorize yeah. guard and then cut back in right here where I actually go through with the transaction. No problem, mate. Because, uh, yeah, every time <laughs> I launch this locally, it's on the wrong version for some reason and I have to change it back. And every single time it happens to me on a demo with investors in the call <laughs> <laughs> and I have to run it through again. Okay, so on. again, let's authorize cut. the encryption protocol. Yeah, that's good. And then let's go ahead and send the tokens to our commerce contract. The transaction will broadcast, and I'll receive a confirmation message. That's it. Oh, that's cool. All right. So now, uh, as a merchant, 
we haven't built our merchant UI yet, but what we have built is a few basic tools for our demo here that allow us to view the person's data and then mark the order was shipped. Let's just go ahead and open up the order manager. Here we are, and we've actually received an order from address 0w3, which is the order that I just made. Let's go ahead and view the details of this order so we know where to ship it. All right, so now, because I'm the merchant and this user has authorized me to access their data, I'm able to see their sensitive data right here without this data actually being made completely public on the blockchain, 100% encrypted. Your data on Swift protocol looks like this. Not much of anything, yeah. honestly. Uh, the string right here, this really does not look like an email. Yeah. So all of your data completely encrypted and can only be viewed by the merchant. Now, if as the merchant, I go ahead and mark this as fulfilling, it'll communicate directly with our API and we'll be able to provide you with a confirmation email. So let's just mind. go ahead and do this and just show the one email here. And as you can see, I've just received this, uh, this email from Juno Merged Out at Swift Protocol that's notifying me that my order is being fulfilled. And we're able to do this on the blockchain without exposing user data. And what are you using to encrypt and then, the data? Was it wired? So we're out? encrypting it using an AES-256 CBC algorithm yeah. that's using a symmetric key, allowing either your key or our API secret key to decrypt your data. Our API will then filter through the merchants that you've authorized to check if that merchant is authorized to view your data. And if that merchant is able to prove their identity to the API, then the API will return the decrypted data. I have a question regarding the um, UX, I would say. Um, as a shop, um, a, or respectively as a client, um, do I have the possibility to pay with credit card as well, or is it only crypto? Because maybe if, if I have an online shop, yeah. so, I would like to offer both. So can I do both with you, or do I need to then create two shops, basically? Absolutely. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we don't want to position ourselves as a crypto business. The overarching vision here is that once we launch, you're not going to be seeing this you're gonna see pay with credit card, and then the second option is gonna be pay with crypto. Uh, even though credit cards do have processing fees, it will still re be relatively cheaper than traditional e-commerce platforms, and that's where we're coming from, right? Is even though we're able to accept credit cards and then convert that to crypto for the merchant, uh, it does get completely abstracted away in the checkout process. So users might not even be aware that they're using blockchain. Great. And are you planning to integrate uh, different chains? So right now, I will need to have access on a Juno chain, right? Or, or when this launches, as you launch on Juno first. But will you bring this to Ethereum, Solana, and like the big chains as well, so that basically everyone without bridging can pay with crypto? Yes, absolutely. Our next step is to bring this to Stargaze so that we can allow NFT creators on there to easily bootstrap stores. We're actually deploying a special contract on Stargaze that allows them to immediately create a print-on-demand store that'll take NFT designs and put them on shirts automatically. Cool. Yeah, that's um, cool. Nice. And then eventually we want to move on to Ethereum, Solana, all these other protocols deploy our contracts there. The thing is, again, right now, is that that requires us to hire Solidity developers. Uh, all of those are the things that we can't accomplish without funding. And that's what our next steps are right yeah, now. Yeah, step by step. That's that's obvious for a startup, but <laughs> it's nice to see the vision and, and where this is going, right? And that this really is supposed to become an e-commerce platform where everyone can participate. Doesn't matter which blockchain the person is native on, or, or if it's not even a blockchain native person at all, and just as yeah. credit cards. So, so that's cool to hear. So I like it. Anyways. All of our orders get managed by our central API, which is chain agnostic. You can sign on any chain and the API will accept it as long as you're able to prove your identity. That's very cool. Yeah. So once we've actually finished fulfilling this order, uh, we may want to mark this as shipped and this requires a tracking link. So I will provide example.com slash track here, but mm -hmm. uh, eventually our APIs will filter this out and make sure that your tracking URL actually leads to a tracking URL. This is just for testing.
Yeah. So let's just go ahead and make that same authorization and mark this order as shipped. This will send an email to our clients, letting them know that their order is on the way and giving them the opportunity to view the tracking link. And as you can see, uh, our order has just shipped. We can view the total that we've paid and we can go ahead and click this button to track our order. Excellent. Um, a quick question on the trustness of the application. Are you going to grade users by reputation? Like if it's a seller who's consistently not delivering goods or stuff, can you get them banned from um, Swift and yes, stuff like that? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. How are you going to be That's where our dispute court comes in. So yes, the network yes. validators uh, will join this dispute court and be incentivized through a portion of the transaction fee to secure the SWIFT network. So essentially, uh, whenever there are merchants that do not ship their orders, we're able to quickly remove them from the network uh, and potentially recover funds for the users. We're able to recover them from either the store's balance or collateral that that merchant may have put up in the trust system. So and, and it's always a question here. To if you register yeah. a store, that means you have to put up a collateral into the system, kind of as a no. guarantee. You do not actually. Um, the thing is, you may want to uh, because we control. You may control your own site, but we do control the checkout site, which means that we're able to show unbiased information to our users. Uh, so we're able to show the user what the merchant's trust score is and if they have collateral. And if you don't have collateral, some users may choose not to use your store because you may not be able to pay them back. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good, uh, makes sense indeed. Um, what about the validators and how is validators going to help secure that? Is that? Do you mean just verifying as they do, uh, verifying blocks by saying common consensus? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and we've already talked to a lot of validators, including Notional and a few others that are more than stoked actually to join onto this dispute court program mm -hmm. and to start receiving fees from Swift protocol to verify that every transaction that goes through our system is legitimate. And this is also how we are going to prevent the sale of illegal goods on our platform, which yeah. should finally seal the Silk Road 2.0 problem. Yeah, 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 completely. Um, yeah, excellent. As a validator, would be very interested to check that out as well. I'd be interested to see how it actually works as well. Um, so it sounds like a new avenue in validation, like, but yeah. Of course, yeah. Um, I guess now let's move on. I have another small thing that I actually just want to talk about. It's not something to show. Uh, okay. So this encryption system, we're, we're able to encrypt emails. So that means that we could technically give authorization to other platforms to access our data. Better yet, we could give authorization to other platforms to send us an email without actually giving them access to our email. That's where notify authorizations come in, and that's another side of the Swift business. Uh, any platform that is integrated with Web3 can request access to a user's email and automatically send them an email through our system without having to know their email, which means that they're protected from any privacy requirement like GDPR or other laws of the sort. And we've already got platforms doing this. Spark IBC is going to be using it to provide receipts to donations, and DowDow is actually currently in the process of integrating this. Wait a second. So uh, I can acquire the email address from everyone that ever purchased something through your store? or only from people that purchased something in my own store. Okay, so to go over this again, as a merchant, you have access to the data that they gave to you. So their shipping address, yeah, yeah. their full name and their email address so that you can ship the package to them. Once the order is completed, you lose access okay. to that information. But here's the thing, you can on your own store request access to their email and if they're willing to give it to you, you can keep it as long as they allow okay. you to, which means that you can have a marketing system. You have you can set up marketing campaigns. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, like and we can actually facilitate talks. you with that. Uh, we have our we have our email API, which means that you can send them emails uh, directly through Swift okay. systems. But just because you said before, like you you can create a secondary business where you sell email addresses without actually revealing them. Couldn't someone just buy all the email addresses and spam without knowing who exactly is on the other no. end? Or, but like, what's the protection here? That's incorrect, actually. Um, 
Yeah. So so that someone can send you emails, you have to authorize their application. Okay. So we manually, for now, we manually verify applications to make sure that they're not going to start sending out spam emails uh, and offer them application IDs. And as a user, you need to authorize that specific application to send oh, okay. you emails. And as long as you have them authorized, they can send you emails. The moment you unauthorize them, they will no longer be able to send you any emails. And they do not know your email because uh, it's a... So how notify authorizations work is that we don't actually expose your email to them. We only allow them to send you an email through mm, our API. Okay. So your data stays secure with us, completely encrypted, yeah. and they never get okay. access to it. Got it. That makes sense. So we're kind of like the middleman, right? Is they'll ask to send an email, with, and then we'll check if they're allowed to send you an email, and then we'll send the email on their behalf. Okay. So if anything, only Swift will have access to your email. And how you said Spark is integrating that. So let's say I bought a shirt. Spark and Dabba, so, yeah. But they will. So, so let's say I buy a shirt right now in, in some online store. I obviously drop my email address. How do you ask me if Spark specifically will get the allowance to use my, or to send me email? Yeah. So whenever you launch Spark, uh, you will need to provide them with your email address and then provide them with an authorization. Okay. So as long as you do not authorize them, they will never be able to access your email or send you emails. Okay. Got it. Awesome. Man. So for an application to send you email notifications, you need to go on their okay. application enter your email and authorize Okay, them. and you just built a backend for them where the email then gets encrypt encryptedly stored. Okay. Yeah, and the email is actually stored encrypted with us, okay. not with them. You never actually send your okay, email to that's them. that's cool. Got it. Yeah. Let's look at analytics because this is a huge part of what we're going to be offering to merchants. So using a segment installation, we're able to gather data from our Guard API and from all checkout pages that use Swift and feed it into our data warehousing solutions. This allows us to provide uh, merchants with live view of who's on their website and uh, especially where they are in the process. That's the most important part. We want to know how many people we're converting and how we can improve those cover conversion rates to make sure that the majority of people that open our site end up purchasing a product. And we're able to provide all of these analytics without putting user data in danger. All of the user data stays encrypted, and we're, we provide merchants with the absolute bare minimum of data to allow them to make educated guesses on how much their conversion rate is. And this is what one of those graphs look like. So for a merchant, they'll be able to see their checkout funnel and see exactly how many users are converting to each different step of their checkout process without revealing user information. So as you can see here, for this specific store, over the last seven days, only 6.2% of visitors actually completed an order. But as you can see, uh, 31, only 31.2% 31 of them actually clicked into the checkout form. And only 25% entered their payment information. And out of those 25% that entered their payment information, it looks like a majority actually clicked off the website before complete, completing their order. Only 6.2% of users actually did that. Very cool. Um, right now, right, and the we're able to interface. This information directly to our merchants. Oh, sorry. Right now, the interface that you provide is, is, is provided by you. So I assume the goal with the statistics is that the shops will be able to build their own checkout interfaces and optimize them for conversion rates, right? Yes, exactly. We'll provide a tool that allows them to customize their checkout page. Okay, so can I imagine that a little but bit like Squarespace? Stay there, right? Yes, okay. that's correct. Like Stripe, for example, it's still hosted by us and it's still controlled by us, but so that we can, you know, show users real data, tell them exactly like what their user, what the merchant's trust score is, mm -hmm. but you're still able to customize it to change the colors and add like text, that type of stuff, just to incentivize users to complete okay. their orders. Cool. Very cool. I love it. Yeah, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Uh, I don't have much more that I can show you for now. But uh, this is pretty much it. We went from creating a store, adding a product to that store, purchasing that product, sending confirmation emails to our users, and then viewing the conversion rate of our users. Yeah, sounds cool. Yeah, it's a great everything great included. Um, one stop shop. Yeah, everything included. One stop shop that you can come to. You know, if you've got some stuff to sell, um, 
the thing is, I suppose I would like your opinion on how you know how you're going to get normal users who don't use crypto to onboard on it. What, what's your plan behind it? Are you just going to release this as like cryptos in the back end? No one knows the difference. Pay by credit card, second option, Absolutely, pay yeah. by with crypto, and then just release it to the masses because. It, you're not the first person that said this recently. Um, a gentleman from uh, Gelato was like, the way they're pitching it is, it's like no one cares about what's going on in the background. They just want a, a working, fast, usable application. That's it. Do you know what I mean? And that's how we're going to drive adoption into the crypto at the end of the day, which is spot on, I think. You know, um, it's just, I wouldn't mind your opinion on Absolutely, that. Absolutely, yeah. Um... I think that's the way to go now for crypto projects that are, you know, DeFi related. Uh, as of right now, you've seen how our platform looks and it's very much crypto centric, right? Because we don't have that infrastructure right now for providing credit card payments. But as we progress uh, and as we get closer to our launch window of January to March 2024, then uh, we are going to, you know, start presenting, I would say, a platform that's closer to Web2 than it is to Web3. I think I'd like to call this Web 2.5 because I, th I think Web3 abstracts away a lot of the things that make customers comfortable with using platforms online. Uh, things like wallets and that type of stuff add a lot of friction that make it impossible for, you know, I, I hate using this term, but for us to bring on the next 1 million people into crypto, yeah. right? At, at the end of the day, you know, crypto is going to be used and uh, blockchain is the driving force behind our platform, but it's not our business model. Our business model, after all, is only to provide faster, cheaper and simpler solutions for e-commerce. And then however we manage to do that is honestly our business. Yeah. Awesome. Man. Yeah, that makes sense. I also like the fact that oh, you guys are actually um, having like a real business model and blockchain is just the tool that you kind of hey like this is useful we can build a better business by by integrating this technology instead of like i feel most of the crypto projects are still like i want to build something with crypto what can i do with crypto and then just try to kind of force the usage of crypto in ways that often you be like is it really you if it, is it really necessary to use um, web 3 here or could I just achieve the exact same thing in web 2 just much more easy for myself and much more easier for the user um, and you guys are like no no actually we have this business model we want to make um, e-commerce cheaper and easier and it just happens that blockchain tech is what enables that so it's like another angle and, and I really like that actually yeah. I think that's a good way to go yeah totally and exciting to see it happening. Um, so where can we find you? Mostly if people want to get in contact, any front end developers that would love to contribute to your project, where's the best place to catch you, Joseph? Oh yeah, absolutely. We are going, the next big step for us is going to be hiring front end developers. So mm -hmm. if you are a front end developer and you do not have to be experienced with Web3, actually we would prefer someone who has no idea how Web3 works. Yeah. Um, if you're a front end developer and you're looking for a short term two to three month contract potentially leading to a full-time job then yes get in touch cool uh, get you on twitter telegram discord do you know discord anywhere particular absolutely yeah uh you can find us on twitter at swift protocol cool. we'll share that in the description below um joseph thanks for coming on today uh thanks for doing the demonstration it was pretty awesome to see man uh all happening on you know lucas uh, our co-host thank you very much for coming on today and uh, thanks for the community for watching. We will catch you in the next one, chaps. Yeah, Take thank care, you man. so much, everyone. Bye thank bye. you so much, Joseph. It was a, was a pleasure. Of course, guys. Great talking to you again. Let's chat soon.